Now coming to the classification of radioactive uh, material packages. In addition to type A, B, U and C packages, also B, M, the radioactive material also classified into three categories based on this potential uh, radiological risk they are they pose during the transportation. And those categories are category one white, category two yellow, category three yellow. So here we can see it is a category white, category one white. This is category two yellow. So now we understood about this uh, radioactive symbol and it has got a radioactive one, two and three. So this is the category one, category two, category three. And one is uh, category one white, category two yellow and category three yellow. So we will see their characteristics. Come to the category one white. Uh, this is the package that contains the low level of radioactive materials and the radiation limit for these kind of packages. The radiation dose rate at the surface of package does not exceed 0 0.005 millisieverts or 0.5 mR per hour. Hence, if the surface dose rate is uh, less than 0.5 mR per hour, then it can be treated uh, termed as category 1 white. So all the uh, lutetium packaging comes in uh, uh, category 1 white packaging. The transport requirements requires minimal regulatory controls and is suitable for normal handling and transport without special precautions. Category 2 yellow. So most of the radioactive material which comes to the nuclear medicine department are uh, uh, coming in category 2 yellow. And this category encompasses uh, packages with a moderate level of radioactivity and the dose rate, surface dose rate should not exceed 0.5 mR to uh, 50 mR. It should not exceed 50 mR per hour and if it is less than 0.5 mR then it will go into the category 1 white but if it is between surface dose rate is in between 0.5 to 50 mR then it will be uh, brought into the category 2 yellow and the transport requirements are a little more stringent and uh, includes labeling and additional precautions during the handling to ensure safety. Now coming to the category 3 yellow when the surface dose rate is surface dose rate now come, we will be discussing at one meter dose rate also that is why i am uh, emphasizing here on surface dose rate so if the surface dose rate is in between 0.5 millisievert to 2 millisievert that is sorry 50 mr to 200 mr per hour then it will be categorized as yellow 3 and the transport requirements are uh, more rigorous and includes a specific packaging, labeling and handling instructions to ensure safety during transportation. This can happen when we are transporting a, a high amount of FDG or high amount of iodine that kind of that time this yellow 3 packaging can be used. There are certain conditions which are uh, uh, called as exclusive use and requires a more higher radioactivity and the, if the radiation limit is to, uh, in between 200 to 1000 mR per hour that time also it will be uh, termed as category 3 yellow but it will have a separate uh, uh, exclusive use of transport of freight containers means only that vehicle will be taking that material and then it will go to the consigner. So the subject to it's it is subject to rigorous regulatory requirements, including uh, specific packaging, labeling, and handling instructions to ensure safety during the transport. Now, uh, how those packaging should be uh, there that we'll see. So it should be able to uh, withstand normal conditions of transport, and that includes the water spray test. Um, means if some rain falls during the transportation onto that package it should be able to uh, bear that so the water spray test is carried out how that test is carried out it is given in the slide that five centimeter per hour of an apparatus one hour it is it should be exposed this is something called free drop test and it should uh, uh, it should fall from certain height and then it is uh, uh, seen that it should not be uh, breaking in between and uh, something called a stacking test because during the transportation uh, certain packages are kept on one of the above so it should pass the stacking test and the penetration test if some steel rod is uh, crossing into uh, hitting in that package it should be able to 
maintain that integrity now coming to the uh, in detail uh, of these tests so it is a uh, uh, simulates the exposure to the rainfall of approximately 5 cm per hour for at least 1 hour. The free drop test measures the lowest point of spacement to the upper surface of target and shall not be less than 9 m for radioactive material in liquid forms. This is the stacking test and equivalent to 5 times of maximum weight of the package and uh, uh, it should be able to withstand of 13 kilopascals of pressure multiplied by the vertically projected area of the package. Now coming to the penetration test, a bar of 3.2 centimeters in diameter with the hemispherical and a mass of 6 kg shall be dropped and directed to fall on its longitudinal axis vertical onto the center of weakest part of the spacement so that if it penetrates sufficiently for it, it will hit the containment system and the bar shall not be significantly deformed by the test performance and the height of the drop of bar measured from the lower end and to the intended point of impact on the upper surface of uh, the spacement shall be one meter now coming to the transport index the transport index determines the maximum dose rate in units of millisieverts per hour at a distance of one meter from the external surface of the package what does it mean? Means if a pack, radioactive package is there and at one meter, whatever radiation dose is coming or the dose rate is coming in the survey meter, that is accounted in the transport index. And the formula for calculation of transport index is the radiation level at one meter in millisieverts per hour into 100. Right? So while thinking, while seeing the formula, you will see it's multiplied with the 100. So what is the significance of 100 and why this 100 is brought here? So this you will find in the uh, history of how the transport index was introduced. So the transport index concept was introduced in uh, 1961 uh, documents of uh, IAEA. That is the regulations for the safe transport of radioactive material 1961. And that time it was termed as a number of radiation units. And it was uh, measured in millirem per hour. But the millirem per hour is a unit of uh, is a non SI unit. So while converting into the SI unit, it, this was changed to millisieverts. And in 1996 publications of uh, safe transport of radioactive material, the unit was changed to millisieverts. So this all hundred is uh, coming because of that unit change of millirem to millisieverts. So. Uh, when we see the uh, label on the transport package, the transport index is between 0.2. So 0.2 will indicate that uh, the radiation at 1 meter from this packet is coming as 0 0.002 millisieverts. And if uh, the transport index is 1, that will indicate the uh, do radiation dose at 1 meter is 0 0.01 uh, millisieverts per hour. If you convert that millisieverts into uh, millisieverts per hour into MR per hour, that is millirontgen per hour, so that will become around 0 0.02, sorry, 0 0.2 MR per hour. So this much of radiation is coming 0.2 MR per hour at one meter of distance from that package. There are different uh, labels of uh, uh, the transport index based on that uh, different category of packages are decided. So if the transport index is zero, that is uh, at one meter, the radiation is coming at very minimal. So if it is zero, so it will be considered in the category one white package. And if it is in between point zero, if it is in between zero to one, then it will go into the yellow two category. And if it is in between one to 10, then it will go to yellow three category. And if it is more than 10, then it will go in yellow three exclusive category. So this is all about the transport index. So now uh, certain shieldings and uh, uh, their nature uh, we will see in next few slides. Uh, here I am uh, using if just as a hypothetical situation if the F18 radioisotope is taken and the activity is taken as a one curie and at one meter how much exposure will be there. So it will be uh, 4.98 millisieverts per hour. Now, see the conditions we are saying is 4.8, uh, uh, sorry, 
uh, if it, it is a F18 isotope and one QD of activity at one meter distance when there is no shielding is used. So the radiation exposure is 4.98 millisieverts or roughly in a 5 millisieverts per hour. Now I have used the shielding material and the shielding used is lead and the thickness of lead which we are using is, is in the centimeters. So the isotope is same and the initial dose rate is 5 millisieverts in the last slide it was 5 millisieverts and just if you are using 3 centimeters of lead so the radiation exposure reduces to 0 0.05 millisieverts per hour uh, when at uh, at 1 meter so from 5 to it reduces to 0 0.05 millisieverts when just shielding is used now uh, it was at the 1 meter and now I am going to calculate it at 1 centimeter means at the surface how much exposure is going to come. It was 5 millisieverts per hour but when at the surface when we are measuring same activities but the distance is it, it was 1 meter now it is 1 centimeter. So it is 5 to 10 to the power 4 millisieverts per hour this much of high radiation will be there at the surface and now if you use the shielding material it reduces to 27.96 millisieverts. It was 5 into 10 to the power 4 millisieverts and when we are using the shielding material it reduces to 27.96 millisieverts per hour. Now if we change from lead to tungsten, if we change from lead to tungsten here we have used the shielding material of lead and it is 27 millisieverts per hour and when you are changing with the same thickness and we using the tungsten material it is from 27 it is falling to 3 millisieverts per hour so that is a high amount of FTG is carried uh, whenever uh, whenever it is transported the tungsten lead shields are used and this is at the surface so uh, 3 centimeters of thickness and at 1 centimeter so 4 centimeters distance it is around 3.2 millisieverts per hour then certain it depends upon the half value layer and the tenth value layer of the uh, lead so for lead the different which has got the different density of 11.34 gram per centimeter so these are different levels of HVL and TVL for different radioisotopes and HVL and TVL for F18 tungsten and concrete and brie it is 0.98 means 1 centimeter and for the 10th value it requires 0.98 means 1 centimeter but in lead it requires 15 mm means 1.5 uh, centimeters thickness is required for lead if it is required to be uh, for the 10th value of uh, a layer and uh, for uh, tungsten it is 0.98 means 1 centimeter of thickness is required for 1 TVL. So now uh, in general conditions one curie of activity is not transported so generally uh, 500 millicurie if it is being carried out uh, taken from the cyclotron and it is being transported to the, uh, the hospital or the diagnostic facility. So if it is, it, it is moving 500 millicurie and it is reaching to the hospital at 100 millicurie and uh, so if that much of activity is being transported so at the surface it will have uh, 1.6 millisieverts per hour when tungsten is used.